Welcome to The Sales Buzz. I'm Rick Amey, your host for this exciting Brooks Group webinar. Thanks for tuning in. Today's topic, the top 10 silver bullet things your sales team needs to know about each and every prospect. And I'm here with Bill Brooks, CEO of the Brooks Group. Bill has been a sales consultant for 28 years. He heads the Brooks Group, an international sales and sales management consulting firm based in Greensboro, North Carolina. He has authored, count them, 18 books, including three national bestsellers. Let's get started. You are a prolific man. Well, I don't know about that. You know, you kind of wear down a little bit, but I really appreciate all these folks uh, uh, tuning in to listen to some of the ideas we're going to talk about. We'll today. dive into some of those ideas. How many salespeople are talking to the wrong people? Unfortunately, vast numbers of them. And that's shown by the turnover of salespeople. There are 13 million salespeople in the United States alone. Uh, it's estimated by some research organizations that 75% of those people shouldn't even be in sales in the first place. Why? I mean, why are that many people doing this when they ought not to be doing this? Because it looks easy. You know, you say, man, I don't have any heavy lifting. I don't have to do anything physical. You get in your car, you drive around, you can uh, play golf with people, take them to lunch. Looks like an easy gig. By the same token, you also have a lot of these other sales jobs where uh, it's, it's, it's a churn and burn kind of a thing. So people are in and out of it. And so consequently, the subtlety of what we're talking about here is something that people don't get. For example, let's say someone is in direct sales, and we have some people who do that. Way back when I started and you had to go and have a, have a spouse, uh, spousal situation, a husband and wife, to make a decision, and only one was there, it was called a one-legger. What that meant was that nobody could sign the paperwork because it had to be signed by two, mm -hmm. okay? In a corporate environment, it's a very different kind of a thing. But the truth is, far too many salespeople, Rick, are talking to the wrong people, and I'll make, make it even, even more startling. Uh, when you look at the rest of these 10, they're talking to the wrong person at the wrong time about the wrong thing. And what, what this basically boils down to is you're, you're just wasting your time, you're wasting the company's time, and you're not going to sell jack. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And so consequently, that's what leads to the churn, the turnover, and it's, in my opinion, in my experience, this is really played down by sales executives and sales managers. The name of the game is to be talking to the right people. Now, there's a theory that says the higher you get in the organization, the greater chance you have of having success. You and I were talking before that we were doing this. Yeah, that's, that's been my experience. Yeah, and yeah. what happens is, is the higher they are, the easier it is to sell. The problem is they're harder to see unless you're well positioned, which is the topic for another whole broadcast that we're going to do. Okay. So uh, the name of the game is the right person at the right time with the right message. All right. And you mentioned sales managers. Now, they've got a role in the fact that their salespeople are talking to the wrong people. And so what are they doing that's perpetuating this problem? Good question. They're doing a couple of things, Rick. One thing is uh, many of them are not teaching their salespeople the importance of this. Uh, another thing is that in many cases, they do not ask the right questions of the salespeople when they come back in. Now, we're going to, in a few minutes, be talking about the right questions that give you the right answers. Listen, Mr. or Ms. Sales Manager. You need to train your salespeople to ask these questions. And they either do it before they get in front of somebody, on the phone or with an internal advocate, or very early in the sales process, to determine whether or not it's a viable, qualified prospect that they're with and whether they should stay or go. And here's the other quick part of this. Then you need to ask these very same questions of your salespeople when they come back from the field. And if you really want to be good, you go with them in the field in joint call situations and you see if they're asking the people the right questions early on if, in fact, they haven't asked the questions before they got there. Well, how many sales managers do you really think are going to do that? Well, let me give you an interesting bit of data. Uh, we have a coaching program that we utilize, followed by what we call the ROI, or Return on Investment Program. And we ask salespeople to give us data uh, from about uh, 13 weeks to one year following a training program that we do. So we stay with people for a year. We ask people, what have you used? What have you learned? You know what we've discovered? With all the people we've done it with, the most common thing is that they say that their sales managers are not going into the field with them. Yet, creates a big time problem. And, and, the, and the reason they're not going into the field is what? They're lazy? Or they, they no. think that once they, be, they become a, a sales manager, they don't have to sell anymore, and so they can just be somebody of sitting up in the office and they don't have to worry about this? Well, it, it's all kinds of answers. But in a general nutshell, yeah. it's kind of like, I've been rewarded. I don't have to carry the bag anymore. Yeah, that, well, that's what I was getting at. And the other one is this. 
in many cases, they are charged with so many administrative, bureaucratic kinds of activities, whether it be credit, collections, um, ordering. We've had places where they're responsible for product ordering, delivery, customer service, that they get waylaid into everything except what is the most important thing, which is making sure that these salespeople are more productive, close the sale faster, get more margin, and move on to the next one. Okay, we're getting ready to get to the questions that people ought to be asking, but, but, but how do you... I mean, what, what do you consider to be the major criteria for determining uh, uh, who the right person is? Very good question. A couple of things. One thing is, you want to aim as high as you can in the organization, but you don't want to be calling on someone who's beyond your pay grade. In other words, let's say that you sell uh, uh, supplies for maintenance, okay? If you are able to get to the right person and understand you're not selling supplies for maintenance. You're selling a, a, an automatic reorder system. You're selling at a better price. You're selling at a money back guarantee. You're selling at same day delivery. Now what happens is you can be higher because what you're selling, Rick, is you are selling something that is broader, more general, more abstract, more valuable. You're not selling mop replacements. Now, if you can't get your salespeople to understand that strategic view, they can't sell at the top. They're going to have to sell at a level lower than that. And the problem you have at that level, like the director of maintenance, the director of maintenance cannot, maintenance cannot create a budget, cannot extend a time frame. They're really locked into what's mandated to them. So based upon what your product is, how good your salespeople are at understanding the strategic view of what your product does for the customer, one of the problems that people have is they emotionally their belief system is I ought to call at this level because I'm comfortable at that level and so I, I can remember back when I was going to college I had a great fraternity experience and I was talking to my son about this the other day he said why did you pledge such and such fraternity I said well most of the guys in that fraternity were first generation college attendees their fathers had been carpenters or whatever and I felt like I wasn't socially strong enough with my background to be involved in the upper level fraternities. So I was in the one with all the jocks, you know, who had been recruited to play football who wouldn't be there probably financially mm -hmm. if they couldn't couldn't get some aid. So I think what happens is the way someone envisions themselves, what they see in themselves will dictate who they call on. And that's another whole topic that we'll do one on, which is expanding your sales force's belief system about themselves. Now you, you already talked to some degree about uh, about this uh, this question that I'm about to ask you, and that is you already said that one uh, one key way to to make sure that your team is doing what it needs to be d uh, doing is that the sales manager gets out there with the team and is following along and making sure they're asking the right questions. But but let me ask you formally ask you that question: How do you guarantee that your sales team is talking to the right people at the right time? And uh, you know, what are the top ten questions that, okay. that they need to be asked? Good question. First thing, you train them to do it and then you hold them accountable. Now, your superior performers do not have to be held too accountable because superior performers, among many other things, they look at their job as if it's their business. It's Rick Amy Incorporated, and there is a Rick Amy Incorporated, <laughs> right? So, so let's say if I said to you, these are the 10 questions, Rick, that will guarantee for your consulting business that you, in fact, are in front of the right person at the right time with the right information you would probably take that and say, boy, that's valuable. If someone's not a top performer, they're, they're, they're going to keep doing what they're doing. You know, there's an old statement that went like this. The more you do what you're doing, the more you get of what you've got. And the truth of the matter is you can't keep doing it like that. The world is changing too much. But the real big thing, look at the numbers. Are these guys performing? Are they delivering business? Are they closing sales within a reasonable amount of time? Is this thing dragging out forever? Here's what happens. If they do not have the answers to these questions, there is probably a very long sales cycle, a very deliberate sales cycle. There may not even be any sale at the end of the rainbow. And this is the key. When the salespeople come back, you sit down with them and you ask these 10 questions of the salespeople and see if they can give you the answers to most of these questions.